Uh, now the same circuit with the dialysis technique. Uh, it's a better uh, uh, depreciation. It's like what exactly happens. So we have arterial chamber, we have a roller pump, we have a heparin pump, we have a dialyzer, we have venous chamber, aid detector and clamp and venous sample ports we have. So this is the circuit of the, dial uh, of the dialysis circuit, we call it. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as I showed you previously, we have an arterial pressure monitor. So this is the normal arterial pressure, which is usually negative because as I said, as the pump with it, so you create a negative pressure and suck the blood from the uh, arterial line. So it will have uh, a normal range of around zero to minus 80. And as it becomes more negative, there is some problem there. So we, there's a uh, indication to the technician to take action. Similarly, venous pressure is positive because you have to pump the blood into the body. So it has to push the blood, it's a positive pressure. So normally it's between 50 to 200. So anything below 50, there'll be alarm. Anything more than 250, you'll have uh, an alarm. Now there are multiple reasons for that. I don't think uh, it will be uh, necessary for you, but you have to understand that if there's any obstruction, if there's anything problem at uh, clotting there, if there's any rupture of the dialysis membrane, any kinks in the dialysis tubings, this pressure, will, uh, pressure alarms will get activated. Now let's look at the dialyzer. So dialysis is nothing but, uh, you know, when you have a paper, when you fold uh, a paper and then uh, cut into it, like four or five papers if you take and cut into it, it will be just like that. This is the cross-section area of the dialyzer. It will be like multiple follow tubes. Like when you, uh, you know, like when you go to restaurants, you see a glass and you put straws on that. When you cut uh, the dialyzer, it will be just like that. It's nothing but a paper folded multiple times and then it was uh, the blood flows in one compartment. <coughs> The dialyzer flows in the other compartment. So we have uh, parts for the dialyzer also. You have something called as header. You have something called as spotting compound. And you have hollow fiber chambers. You have blood output. And you have uh, blood inflow and the blood outflow. The top is the blood inflow. The down is the blood outflow. And uh, header is the top one. And the blood and the dialyzer always flows in the opposite direction. Now, this is called as counter current flows just to maintain the maximum gradient of solute throughout the dialyzer. Uh, uh, throughout the dialyzer. Now, uh, so what is the dialysis membrane made up of? Now, dialysis membrane, again, we have, uh, we have made a huge, tremendous progress in the dialysis membrane. Initially, what we used was a cellulose-based membrane, which uh, <clears throat> No, which is uh, uh, which causes high reactions and all those things. Later, we have semi-synthetic cellulose membranes, which is cellulose diacetate, triacetate, and uh, diethyl aminosyl substitute cellulose. And uh, what we are now using is a synthetic polymers. Uh, what we most commonly use is a polysulfone membrane. And we have PMMA, acrinyl, and um, gambrane, polyamide uh, membranes, all those things. The latest is the synthetic polymers, which has less reactions, and uh, the biocompatibility is the good. Uh, it, it's a good uh, biocompatible membrane. These are good biocompatible membranes, basically. So, <clears throat> so when you look at a dialyzer, you have to look at the type of the membrane and what is the volume capacity of the dialyzer, what is the surface area, and uh, how many times it can be reused, and uh, the clearance of various substance, uh, substances and the sterilization requirement. Now, uh, the latest uh, thing uh, we are following in Apollo is a no reuse policy. Previously, we used to reuse the dialyzer. So we used to calculate the volume of the dialyzer and then uh, until it comes down 40% below the basic, uh, baseline value, we used to reuse the dialyzer. For the past three, four years, we, has, uh, we stopped reusing the uh, dialyzer because uh, the num more number of times we reuse the dialyzer, the efficacy of the dialyzer will come down. Now, these are not important for you. Flux and efficacy is not important for you. Uh, so basically, efficacy is the uh, uh, capacity of the dialyzer to remove urea and other substances. Whereas flux is the pore size. So basically you have small pores through which the solutes move across. So the bigger the uh, pore size, the higher the flux of the membrane. Surface area, when you talk about the surface area of the dialyzer, the bigger the membrane, uh, the higher the efficacy for, to remove uh, small molecules like urea and all, which is called as efficacy. The normal efficacy is around, uh, uh, it will it, it, be around uh, uh, urea clearance by body weight is less than three. It's more than three is high efficacy. Uh, flux is again based on the uh, size of the pores. Now, uh, just like outside circuit, we'll have inside circuit in the dialysis machine also because the dialysate is uh, mix uh, is created by mixing water with acid and the base. So what happens is we'll have uh, uh, treated water, which is nothing but um, ultra pure water or pure water that uh, there's certain guidelines uh, 
so for uh, how to use this water also so the water will get uh, gets into the machine it gets it gets heated and deaerated and uh, there's something called proportionating system which will suck acid and the base from the cans uh, just give me one minute Sorry, I'm using my mobile because my system is down, so I'm getting some calls in between. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, am I audible, Davanya? Okay, you're audible. Yes, you're audible. Yeah. So basically, we have a proportionating system where uh, it sucks the acid and the base and mixes with the water in certain proportions, and then create the uh, dialysate. Once the dialysis dialysate is created, we have to measure uh, how the dialysate is. So basically how much sodium and potassium and all. So we can't check every time. So we have a conductivity monitor based on the amount of sodium and calcium and magnesium. The conductivity, they'll be conducted to alarm also in the machine. And then it will be uh, shifted to the balancing chamber and then it will be given to the uh, dialysate. Now, what is the dialysate composition? As I said to you, normal dialysate contains sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, magnesium, and calcium. So these are the normal values. You can remember if you want. But generally, what is important is the sodium and the potassium. Sometimes we make zero calcium dialysate also when, have, when you're dialyzing very high calcium-containing patients. Uh, 